Well, I've actually written about this very question. Um, I think that that uh, in the emergence of what might be taken to be a new genre, and that's always an open question: is 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 this a new genre? Is the weblog a new genre? I don't think that I don't think the answer to that is is necessarily obvious. That we can understand that we can help to answer that question by understanding. Um, the, res the rhetorical resources that users of weblogs uh, are drawing on in um, creating the new kinds of actions that they seem to be engaging in. Um, so so uh, those who have written diaries, private diaries, those who have engaged in scrapbooks and commonplace books, those who have engaged in um, collections of curios, those who have engaged in uh, uh, accounting and record keeping um, can, will, will be able to draw on the resources of those other kinds of rhetorical actions in engaging in, in, in any kind of new action. Um, but, but it's not to say that, that those ancestral or, or antecedent genres um, fully control or define uh, a new genre. They simply uh, constrain, inform, uh, facilitate uh, the engagement of people with new media in e with each other in new ways and they sort of together evolve a new mode of interacting with each other that draws on these uh, available rhetorical resources. Within the framework of that, I'd like uh, that answer. I'd like to uh, talk about three kinds of histories, and then uh, also then talk about what might be ancient history, which has uh, no immediate uh, connection. Um, but uh, so the first level of histories is what Professor Miller, I think, was in fact talking that, about that as situations change. Uh, media change and we have genre change, people still have rely on their existing understandings and groups rely on their existing understandings. So um, when a, a new medium comes in, often the, uh, the first products on that medium, um, we've seen this uh, many times on the web, really are uh, simply the transplantation of, uh, of a genre from a previous medium um, or previous set of situations, yes, exactly. then people discover new possibilities, new ways of doing it. But um, you know, one of the amazing things I've seen through the history of literacy is that uh, uh, we made amazing inventions, amazing changes. But each of these inventions actually can be seen as very small, the kinds of things human beings can do. I won't go through the whole story, but those of you who heard me retell Schmant Bessrat's story about the uh, uh, inventions of literacy sees how it, each of these steps does not take a genius um, to imagine, but they are gradual response to the potential of your medium, um, recognizing your situation. So there has to be a kind of a a transition in which people are learning and in that learning they draw on what they've uh, known before um, and now in our current period with, uh, where there are many people engaged um, in very new kind of so uh, not just technological but social arrangements activity arrangements there's a lot of uh, learning very fast but it's all of very little inventions um, and just happening uh, in a very large social way, so it seems like um, there's enormous, in total you can't say there's rapid generic change. Um, in the course of developing a single project or a set of projects, um, an individual, a group of people will also run through um, starting from what they know and in the various drafts or versions um, will transform as they discover new possibilities of, of the new medium. Um, always, always, also remembering though, if your message is going to be understood, you cannot get too far ahead of your audiences uh, who are also trained to share the previous prior genres with you. And so that's uh, 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 you have to bring your host audience along with you into the new world of genres. 
then it happens at an individual level. We all have our individual histories. And in fact, the term antecedent genres, um, as uh, Professor Devitt has, has been using, it's largely an individual uh, uh, history of what were your prior personal experience of genres which you bring to understand any current text or new situation. So those are three levels of history. Mm -hmm. um, now, then, now, we've been talking so far about um, uh, older genres that are invoked in the process of change towards newer genres. Sometimes uh, I found that looking at totally ancient genres which are not available now and are not being invoked nonetheless help us can help us understand the kinds of problems people were solving at that time. How did they, why did they write such strange things which brought such an, un, from our eyes, such an unusual um, uh, cluster of things together in the way that they did? In doing that, you start to understand their social problem, the dimensions of uh, communicative situations, and so that also does provide a knowledge for helping us understand the new possibilities of very different situations.